is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Real, honest, entertaining, live. DBL starts right now. That 
was Britney Spears' iconic song, Toxic, to the start of the show, of course. We are talking about her big win in court yesterday. Welcome to DBL. It's Thursday, July 15th. I'm here with Lindsay and Al, and I want to get right to it. This is huge for her, and it was huge for us all to learn. She was back in court for her conservatorship case, and she posted this video to celebrate her big win. It shows her horseback riding and doing cartwheels. So in the post, Britney says, quote, coming along, folks, coming along. New with real representation today. I feel gratitude and blessed. She also thanked fans and for the very first time people, she used the hashtag free Britney. That's big. Britney was referring to her new legal counsel, this high profile former federal prosecutor. His name is Matthew Rosengard and get used to him. He'll be in the news a lot. The judge in the case yesterday allowed Britney to choose her own lawyer and this is who she picked. Now during the hearing, Britney who called in said she wanted to press charges against her father, Jamie, for conservatorship abuse. She also broke down in tears at times while describing the abuse she claims happened to her. Britney's new lawyer said he will be filing paperwork in the next few weeks to remove Britney's father from the conservatorship, which has been in place since 2008. Big day. We all laughed to free Britney when it started. We all did. Right. And now we're all like, she's using it herself. New representation. She's seen as competent Lindsay. I think when we heard her speak and we heard how her sentences were full and she was adamant the last time we heard her speak and talk about some of the things that were happening, like she was banned from having children or any decisions that a woman really makes with such grace and dignity, it's just like to see her in this space of it and to get the representation that she wants and to say, forget everything, I just want to press, she's so angry at her father that she wants to press charges and that's her number one concern over a medical assessment. It's just interesting to me to see that family went down this path so far because you have to remember how young she was when she got this fame and so, yeah. you know, we all talk about how we regret, um, how we were mocking her when she went through the bald head phase and all this stuff, but now she's here and we all can understand as more grown adults um, that she actually has had a really tough time dealing with fame and obviously her family has also. Yeah, I mean, Al, she she claimed her father was drunk and she was scared he was drunk all the time, that she couldn't eat certain things, she couldn't get coffee, she couldn't uh, go to get her nails done, and that's why her hair's been all crazy. All of this stuff, she says, has been banned from her father, and this lawyer represents like Spielberg, like Eddie Vedder, like top of the list. What do you think? Uh, it reminds me of like in My Cousin Vinny, when he got rid of that first lawyer, yeah. that st stutter, <laughs> the stutter, and then, and then got, got, got Joe Pesci. I, you can tell this is a new day with this new lawyer. But, you know, I, I hope that there is, guys, some trickle down. Because Britney has incredible resources just in her fanship. They started a hashtag, which actually works. A lot of times, kind of social media activism doesn't really go anywhere. Right. This actually did. But I would like for this to continue, and even if you continue to use the free Britney for other people, I would like there to be some kind of sanctioning body that takes a look at conservatorships, conservatorships, because if somebody with her resources takes how many, uh, 14 years to get anything done, what chance do I have? Very you know, well that's my question. Yeah, very, very well said. And just so you guys know, now that the big news is not that she got her own lawyer, but that a judge found her competent enough to choose her own lawyer. So that means a lot in terms of how competent she is to maybe get rid of a conservatorship and other things. So it speaks volumes for her. So let us know what your favorite Britney song is and if you're happy. Toxic. <laughs> yeah, you love that song, huh? That's a sexy song, man. It is a good song. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Cutie patootie. All right. Chrissy Teigen is opening up about her life following her bullying controversy. Chrissy came under fire last month after old tweets of hers resurfaced where she called on celebs like Courtney Stodden and Lindsay Lohan to kill themselves. Now, Chrissy has since apologized, but in a recent Instagram post, Chrissy said she feels lost and is not handling being canceled very well. She went on to write, quote, cancel club is a fascinating thing. I have learned a whole lot and it's hard to talk about because obviously you sound whiny when you've clearly done something wrong. It just sucks. Can I make a statement and ask what you think? Is she addicted to Twitter and social media? Well, part of this whole thing is starting to rub me the wrong way. Me too. That's what I mean by that. It's like, why does she have to keep doing this? Well, I think that 
the stuff that she did was egregious. We talked about it a couple Agreed. of years ago, but nobody jumped down her throat then. And the fact that she just lost a child and it's like whoever decided to dig this story up and now we're on a rampage, kind of just making her feel even worse after one of the worst times in her life. I think she also is naming things like depression and saying that in her statement. I think we need to give this woman a little bit of grace and go back to the original story. I know Erica Cobb, our other co-host, talked about why people were bashing, you know, the Michael Costello in the first place is sure. because he was allegedly saying the N word to a model and being racist. And so mm. if the and story a black designer, right, and, the, and so if the story starts there, let's just talk about the whole story and stop just finding ways to make her feel even worse in one of the worst times of her life. And I usually would agree with you, but I don't here because she's doing this. She's posting continuously about how she feels bad about the whole situation, but she's also putting herself, it's like, I'm scared of getting wet, but I jump in the water. She's yeah. just always on social media. I think that it's difficult for people our age, Tori, just in our genre, in our kind of age group that grew <laughs> up without the internet to understand that there are certain people that are addicted to that just like some people are addicted to working out. You've seen those people right, right. that work out twice a day, three hours a day. That's an addiction. Food, video games. And I shopping, think, sex. Shopping, yeah, sex, yeah. whatever it is. And I think this is what we're seeing here. This is a person that, you know, Lindsay, I see your posts and some, some are very emotional with your husband, some are, are political, but you like are in the middle with everything. When you start having these extreme things where you're like, kill yourself, where I love you, and you're letting everybody know these very personal thoughts, I think that that's how it shows that that's how you identify. Mm -hmm. But I also, think she feels like she's had her identity so, taken. But Chrissy T is not like this big actress. She never was this model right, that was a true. supermodel. And so social media has been the her, liaison for her to make tons of money and be, a that's a lucrative point that's in her life. So to point. tell her to get off of that is kind of ridiculous when that's her number one breadwinner that affords her all these opportunities that she has right now. Interesting. It, but it's interesting that it's rubbing us a little bit the wrong way at this point. And also, people have done worse and gotten back in social good graces, I think, quicker. Yeah. Like, I, think I don't she, know why she's just so done done that's just weird to me yeah well let us know what you all think it's a great discussion coming up on dbl we're talking with david hasselhoff's daughter Haley. she's telling us all about her experience being the first plus size playboy cover model i was the second one. ever you weren't never on playboy <laughs> trust me i would have bought one and a daredevil gets bitten by a shark while filming a really dangerous stunt is hollywood making people scared of the ocean stay tuned for this one Closed captioning provided by. Hi, DBL Nation. Happy Hello. Thursday. It's Kelly Schubert here with the DBL Digital Team. Let's continue the conversation with our host. Oh, listen to how professional Kelly is. Thank you. Great pick. Guys, today's a new day. I'm feeling empowered. Ooh. Free Britney, right? Like today, yesterday was Independence Day for Britney. Wasn't it? Yeah, and I can't tell if you're being sarcastic or not. No, I'm, like I'm being really happy. One, I, no, I'm really happy. I listened to Brittany all the way on the way to work today, which is only a five minute drive. But... And explain what happened to the car behind you. Oh, okay. So I was like really dancing <laughs> at a stoplight, yeah. like really dancing, like not you, not the normal kind of dancing. Like I was really getting into it, and the what girl behind me, Sorry, toxic. Okay. And the girl behind me <laughs> saw it, and she started dancing too, and I saw her dancing in my rearview mirror, and it just made me so happy to think that like I inspired her to start dancing. Like she didn't know I was listening to Brittany, obviously, but like. I made her do a little jig in her Sometimes car. Sometimes when there's like somebody cranky next to me and I'm dancing, I dance even harder. Yeah. Yeah, I just, like, Did they okay. ever dance back though? No, they're having a bad day, but I'm like, I, I can't relate. So See, I'm just going to keep that would cheer me up though. If I was do you guys a bad really day, dance so. in the car? Yeah. yeah. It depends. Like if something surprises me on the radio, it really is a blessing. Like I really feel thrilled really? about it. Yeah. Like, more like it's on the left side move, I'm like, you just want to really like, right, let me listen to those words again. <laughs> Al's more of a words to Yeah, I do. But Al, you really do like lyrics, though. I do. You send me songs, you like, listen to what they're saying. Yeah, yeah that's my thing. Oh. But yes, Britney, Toxic. Toxic, what's your song favorite Britney song? Of all time. I think I'm a slave for you. Oh. Yeah, that's yeah. a good one. Ooh. Yeah. How about this yeah. one? Maybe a little prediction of a forward. Alex, how about this one? She's so lucky, yeah. she's a star, but she cry, cry, yeah. cry cries, cries cry. in her lonely oh, heart. You know what's thinking. so funny? If you just sang she's it regular, people would still remember the lyrics. Oh, 100%. You, you're breaking it down like encyclopedia version. Yeah. Like <laughs> and we got English it. This is our third language. She said, and she cried. Cry. No, she cried. points, cried. Lindsay. So I want to point out what crying actually means in that sense. <laughs> <laughs> she also is a star. Okay. It's a DBL really Nation, let us know what your favorite Britney song is. How are you feeling today? Are you feeling a little bit empowered like us? Let us know. Free Britney. Bye.
Welcome back to DBL. It's Shark Week, huh? A time when so many of us become complete, thanks Al, complete fanatics for all things sharks. But this year, one of the Shark Week stunts went horribly wrong. So one of the guys from the Jackass TV show, Sean McInerney, was attempting to do a wakeboard jump over shark-infested waters. He fell in. Now our lawyers are telling us that we must warn you again, do not try this at home, but take a look at how Sean described the terrifying moment. I think we went a little too slow. And I launched like four to five feet into the shark pit. And when I landed in that shark pit, I thought I was gonna die. There's like 10 sharks around me. I was trying to swim out. And I couldn't. Gosh, Sean's hand was completely mangled by the shark and there are photos, but they are really so gnarly and so graphic that we just didn't want to show them on TV to be super honest. But let's just say it looks like it will take him a lot of time to recover mentally as well. So what do you think? Did Shark Week jump the shark? Yeah. It did. I'm old enough. You know what I was thinking about, uh, Lindsay, this morning? This is random. <laughs> I thought you were just going to stop and walk away. I was thinking about Shark Week this morning, but I re I'm old enough to remember kind of the origins of just like, it used to be Shark Week on Discovery. You'd be like, oh, cool. And then it got a little big, bit bigger. And I feel like it made the jump when Sharknado was so bad it was good. And then kind of people were mentioning it and it was getting some love online. And now all of a sudden it's Shark Week. And it went from like, oh, it's Shark Week to like, we have to blow something up. We got to get 50 sharks. And this eventually you're gonna get to the point where somebody loses a hand. Am I wrong? No, I saw that I saw like Tiffany Haddish is involved and like it's really like a celebrity it, yeah. Yeah, celebrity driven thing. And I, I just watched this and as much as I'm sorry that this man was hurt, why did you do that? Like I just can't fathom why somebody would be like, sure, let me go ahead and do this for the TV show. And I know that's what he does on his TV show. <laughs> but like, this is so ridiculous you've to me. answered your question. <laughs> but, but I mean, like, that is like, like, the other things are like stunts that they do on that show and they might get hurt, like on a skateboard on the ground. This is like a stunt in water where you can't really control the variables. So yeah. to me, that's far. like, is it worth dying for? You talk about what people do yeah. for Instagram. Is it worth dying for? Is it worth dying for for TV, to me? Well, it's one of the things we did on the podcast, we talked about somebody that died uh, the, with the running of the bulls. Yeah. You, you know, Pete, and that's, I don't think people necessarily want to stand in front of a bull, but people are like, oh, well, I feel pressure and I got to do it and get my adrenaline going. And as you push the ante, eventually you're going to find yourself on the back of a water ski jumping 100 sharks and it's going to go left at some point. Yeah, and if he did say I went into their living room while they were eating, okay, but it is their environment and sharks are not all that bad, but there is some research out. I want to speak of sharks right here. We're uh, getting to this. Um, our prompter is gone down real quick, so. I think that we're out of time, and that's why. Well, I wanted to bring up, like, I don't, uh, like, as somebody who watches Jaws open water, I think we talked about this. I'm not a huge fan of the ocean and jellyfish, anything under there. I, this is, like, the most disturbing content that to watch. That goldfish story was enough for me <laughs> yesterday. That giant, goldfish? I might be done with the water, buddy. I think you've never been in the water. This I is, if you've it. never seen, the reason we say jump the shark. This is Fonzie from Happy Days jumping a literal shark from Happy Days. This is when the actual show we say he was wearing a leather jacket what? in the water <laughs> while water skiing. And here we go. Here we go. This is what we say went too far. And that was jumping and people were the just shark. Basically I think there was the show was over after that point. Yeah, and that's what, where we got the expression "jump in the shark." Yeah. All right. I love the history. Oh, always there for you. <laughs> Coming up on ZBL, the fabulous Haley Hasselhoff, how she's turning mental health struggles into success after growing up in the spotlight. <laughs> First up, what you could get. To qualify, single filers need to make $75,000 or less. For joint filers, the cutoff is $150,000. For each child under the age of 6, you get $300 a month. For each child between 6 and 17, you get $250. These payments will last through December. Next, how will you get it? The IRS will send out the money today, but according to the tax experts, it could take two to three business days for the direct deposit to land in your account. But that's only if you usually get your refund by direct deposit. If the IRS doesn't have your account information, a paper check will be mailed out. The IRS has developed online tools to help answer some questions. 
Go to irs.gov and look for the child tax credit update portal on the front page. If the IRS does not have your banking information, you can enter it there so you can receive the next payment electronically. Or you can opt out of later payments if you decide you would rather claim the child tax credit on next year's taxes. Welcome back to DBL. Haley Hasselhoff has grown up in the spotlight as the daughter of the Hoff, David Hasselhoff, and actress Pamela Back. Well, now she's coming into her own as an advocate for body positivity and has just launched a new podcast. We get to cut caught up with her on today's Chatting with the Stars. Haley, welcome to DBL. Now, you started out being a curve model at age 14, but what was that like for you at that time? Because then there wasn't much awareness or even representation about body yeah. positivity. You're one of the pioneers. Oh, well, thank you. I mean, I think for me, I look back at that time and I really look at it as a blessing. You know, I think everyone has their own journey when it comes to modeling, especially getting into the industry at such a young age. But for my own self growth, to be around women who are voluptuous, fit, toned, and curved, I was like, wow, what is this underground world where people are celebrated for being themselves? And it really taught me the value and being able to use your voice to really represent that beauty comes in all different shapes and sizes. So it was such a beautiful experience for my own self, because like you said, media wasn't talking about it like they're talking about it today. Um, and it helped me really find my power beyond my size. Amen. Well, Haley, congratulations are in order because you recently made history, becoming the first curve model to appear on the cover of a European Playboy for Playboy Germany. <laughs> but this story really resonates with me a lot because you said you had to wear your own lingerie. And oftentimes representation is not available on set when it comes to hair, makeup, and wardrobe. So do you think that the magazine and fashion industry in general needs more work on being more inclusive. I look at the positive, right? The positive was that I got to bring on pieces that made me feel comfortable. And as somebody who has worked within this industry for so many years, I had the opportunity and really the blessing to know what brands fit my style and what fit my body. So it really helped me on the day of the shoot. But do I think that there's still a need for more size inclusive pieces out there that are available for, for anybody whenever they want them? A hundred percent. We still have a long way to go in this industry. What do your parents think about you posing in Playboy? You know, they're super supportive of me and my choices. And you have to remember as well, I started out, like you said, when I was 14. So they were there with me. They drove me to tour when I was shooting, when I was, you know, under 18. And they saw how much I had to go through in my teenage years to really be able to feel comfortable within my skin. Um, and they were a great support system beyond that. It's just mom and dad, you know, when it came to my body image and making me feel celebrated for who I was. And so I think that they look at this as a huge milestone for Curve in general and are just very, very happy for me. You have a podcast called Redefine You where you get super real, which I love, super raw, which I love, and you're talking about mental health. You're talking about dealing with yeah. social anxiety and depression. And like, why did you decide to, to put yourself out there like that? Because I, I look back at my life and I feel like a lot of people that I've grown up with had these things, but it just wasn't diagnosed. Did you see that with your friend group? 
I kind of was curious to know what was in my friends' toolboxes. You know, when they're having a struggling moment, but they still have to show up on a live show, what do they do in that instance to pull it together or to be able to walk alongside their anxiousness? So we had an amazing run of talking to friends of mine in the industry on the Insta Live series, which now has graduated over to the podcast. We're not only going to be speaking to friends of mine about their ownership to self and their mental well-being journey, but we're also tapping into speaking to different wellness practitioners and really breaking down these stigmas that are around mental health toolboxes so that we can help you build your personalized toolbox so that if you have a challenging moment, you know what to divert to, to hopefully help you along the way before it gets to a crisis. Girl, you are speaking my language. I feel like I could exhale just listening to you as someone who suffers from anxiety and depression. So thank you for breaking yeah. that stigma. So what have you learned speaking with some of the experts on your podcast? Any tools or tips that you could offer us as well as our viewers who are watching right now? The three top tools that I would give you when it comes to living in a full state of acceptance, and that is tending to your emotional triggers, building your personalized toolbox, and really being able to live a life without self-judgment. Wow, Haley, you are such a role model, and when I say that, I don't, uh, I don't just say that to anybody. And I'm just, I'm really thrilled that my daughter, at such a young age, will grow up with people like you uh, being those role models. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate you, Haley. Thank you for joining us here in DBL. Be sure, DBL Nation, to catch Haley's podcast, Redefine You, a conversation for well-being. It is available right now. Check it out. And thank you again, Haley. Thank you so much. Promotional consideration is brought to you by... It's a perfect time to take up viewer Pamela's inquiry. She wrote... A heating and cooling company told us that the AC can't cool more than 20 degrees below the temperature outside. So we adjust the thermostat accordingly. We have a heat pump. So is it true you shouldn't set your thermostat more than 20 degrees below the outside temperature? Our sources for this, the U.S. Department of Energy and home improvement expert Tom Garcia with Southern Evergreen. They say the answer is true, depending on your system. So that is true in some instances. When a person has a heat pump system, heat pumps are very efficient and they're great for our area because we don't have extreme highs and extreme lows. So heat pumps are, are wonderful. But the thing about heat pumps is when we get really cold, they lose efficiency. If you get really hot, they lose efficiency. So you're right, that 20 degree margin is about right. Although some heat pumps are better than that. It depends on the, the quality of the heat pump. If you don't have a heat pump and you have separate AC and furnace units, you don't have to follow the 20 degree rule. But our sources agree you should adjust the thermostat before you leave the house. The energy department advises you to set your thermostat to as high a temperature as comfortably possible in the summer and bump it up even higher when you're not home. The smaller the difference between the indoor and outdoor temperatures, the lower your overall cooling bill will be. But if adjusting your thermostat every day is too much hassle, Garcia has another suggestion. And these little babies are sweet, and they're not expensive anymore. You know, it used to be, but they're not anymore. Programmable thermostats. And so you can set, set them when you leave to go to work, you know, pop the, the temperature in your home or raise it, whatever the season may be, four to five degrees. And then just before you come back, maybe a half hour, an hour before you're going to arrive home, let the system start to cool or warm it back up again for you. That can really save a lot of energy. In conclusion, we can verify, yes, if you have a heat pump, don't set your thermostat more than 20 degrees below the outside temperature. If you have a standalone AC unit, you can set it at whatever you want. Just adjust the temperature when you're not home to save energy. Misleading posts shared thousands of times claim, quote, Japan has banned all BLM apparel from the Olympics. No one can kneel slash raise fists during the anthems, end quote. But is that true? Let's verify. Our sources include the International Olympic Committee and the Olympic World Library. The Olympics are governed by the IOC and the Olympic Charter. It's a set of rules that everyone agrees to follow within the Olympic venue. Rule 50 of that charter states that no political, religious, or racial demonstrations or propaganda are permitted. So we can verify, no, Japan did not ban Black Lives Matter apparel and kneeling during anthems. It's the IOC that sets those rules. But the IOC did update their guidelines to allow athletes to express themselves on the field prior to the start of competition for the Tokyo Olympics. With your Fast Facts, I'm Ariande Till.
Welcome back to DBL. It's time for some sweet, sweet deals. Earlier, Steph showed me some amazing products at even better prices. Here's this week's Deal Blast presented by MorningSave.com. What do you have for us today, Stephanie? Hey, Tori, I'm here with some great products and deals for you guys. So first up, I've got something that will give your eyes the royal treatment that they deserve. It's the 12 pack Spa Life Rejuvenating Gold Dust under eye patches. So these are loaded with collagen to rejuvenate the look of tired, aging under eyes. Normally a pack of these is as much as $20, but we've got it for only 10, saving our viewers up to 50%. Half off, that's what I like to see. Next up, I've got the perfect item to help you entertain guests all summer long. It's the Eternal Life Tiki Flame Wireless Speaker. Oh, whoa. This rechargeable speaker plays your favorite songs while the lamp flickers like a real torch. So normally this is as much as $50. We've got it for $25, saving our viewers up to 50%. So you're taking half off everything. Thank you, Stephanie. I love Love this. Thank you, Stephanie. And now dermatologists can get really expensive, yeah. but I've got something that's going to cleanse your face like the professionals. It's the Eco Bloom Spa Facial Beauty Steamer with an extraction. Oh case. yeah. So you can use the steamer's facial mask and clear pores. Normally this is as much as fifty dollars, but right now we've got it only for twenty-four, saving fifty-two. You just go out there with glowing skin knowing your wallet is full. And last but not least, I've got something that blends fashion with function. It's the two pack touch screen purse backed by Laurie Grenier. You can keep your smartphone clean, safe and accessible. You just oh. touch it through the back. So normally it's as much as $60, mm. but we've got two for $90. Oh. Saving our viewers 68%. Okay, guys, if you don't know Lori Grenier, she is a shark yes. from Shark Tank, and this is something she got from Shark Tank. Great product, Stephanie. Head on over to MorningSave.com to snag these amazing deals at the lowest prices. You can even visit MorningSave.com right on your smartphone. Thanks again, Steph. All right, so raise your hand in the studio here, too, if you've ever done, like, a steamer over the bowl of water to get your... Oh, steam. definitely. I have, yes. too, right? Just me and Al? Just, like, what do you mean? Just like, to, like a facial. Yeah. I never did that over my own bowl of water, Make sure no. to bring that up with four seconds ago. In the cool. <laughs> TV is new every day. We'll see you same time, same place tomorrow. Wait a second. <laughs>